What does God want for Father's Day? He wants your heart. On this Father's Day, how can we not honor the best father in the whole world? And that is God the Father. You know, sometimes on earth, you know, we put our fathers in a hard position. We are disobedient. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. And then who's supposed to come to the rescue? That's right, your dad. Well, do you know God the Father will come to your rescue? I just want to bless you this morning with a brief uh, testimony of how God the Father proved himself to me when I was in a hard place, and he will prove himself to you no matter where you are. Remember, you are never too far to come home. So before we get into this word, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you and honor you because, Lord, you love us so much. You sent your only son to die for our sins. We thank you right now that we can come home through Jesus Christ. And, Lord, right now, none of me, all of you, bless the people with your heart, with your word, and draw us close to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, just to set this up a little bit, this is actually... um, Two messages together in one. One I did a while back, and it was focusing on the prodigal son. You might say, what's the prodigal son? The prodigal son is that person who goes off, does their own thing, and then um, finds themselves in a low place. And you can find the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. But today, um, it's you'll find yourself right in the middle of the message talking about that prodigal son, that prodigal daughter, and in the middle of that, um, one of my testimonies. So without further ado, let's just get into the word. And then some, you know, sometimes we can get caught up. Here we see the prodigal son. He is out doing his thing and he he's caught up now in, in relationships, hooked with somebody that maybe God didn't, didn't even want him to be with. And that can happen both ways, women and men. We can get caught up. You know, we can make a person in our lives even bigger than God where they have you doing things that you know is not God's will. You know inside that that voice is telling you this is wrong, this is not right, but you think you need their love. But I want to tell you this morning, the only love you really need is the love of God. If you have the love of God first, everything else in your life will line up. But when you don't have the love of God, no other love will satisfy you.
And so look at this picture now. You know, before we saw the picture and back in the day getting caught up, but look at this image now. We have this this young couple here. This I'm focusing in on this girl. I she's just leaning on this guy who really can't do anything for her. He's not much older than her and you know, he might have told her all kinds of things, but whatever he told her wasn't true. You know, oh, come with me. If you love me, you'll do this, you'll do that. But can he really provide? No. Everything is, is just a facade, you know, wants to come across strong, but he needs just as much help as she does. He's lost too. So what can you do? A lost person following someone else's loss or a blind person following the blind. You know, it's a dark world. It's a gray world. It's a tough world out there. Um, and people just cannot take care of you or fulfill you like the way the father can. So what do you do when the money runs out? What happens when the dream is shattered? What happens when things just didn't turn out the way you wanted them to? You know, it. you might think, well, maybe I should go home. But for some people, maybe home wasn't a great place to go. Maybe home was so horrible that they felt like they needed to run away. But I want to tell you, we have a, a real home. Our real home is in Christ. Our real home is in Jesus Christ. And it may seem crazy, but if you just take a step of faith, if you just take a step of faith and trust the Father to bring you out, he will. And I'm, I'm thinking right now of a time in my life, I was a young adult, off in the big city on my own. I got out of college and I just got all my little money and I went to the city and I was like, oh, it's going to be awesome. I'm going to get a job and it's going to be great. And I did do all those things, but city life is just wasn't that much fun. You know, how many clubs can you go to? How many parties can you go to? It seemed like something was missing. And a friend invited me to church and I did go to church. And um, but but, you know, financially, everything, things were really tight. I mean, it was really hard. I had hardly any money. So I'm like that prodigal just out in the big city. I know God but not doing everything according to his will. And so I was thinking, you know, Lord, what can I do? I, was, I remember being in a place where I was hungry, had hardly any money, um, no money. And I remember hearing a voice just saying, you know, go get something to eat. And I'm like, what? And I, you know, I was like, well, what do I have to lose? Okay. So I went inside a restaurant and I just ordered whatever I wanted. I didn't have enough money to pay for that meal. And I remember thinking, well, I heard that voice tell me to just go in and, you know, get something to eat. And I, I believed it was God and I decided to trust the voice. So I went into the restaurant, I ordered whatever I wanted to eat. And it wasn't even that much. I mean, it was probably less than $10, but it was a good meal for me. And at the end, I remember sitting there when it was time to get up and go pay, thinking, man, I don't have any money. I started thinking in my mind about maybe I can go ask them if I can wash dishes or do something because I did not have the money. And a gentleman sitting over a couple of tables away from me, an older gentleman, you know, older, looked like a grandfather. I was about to get up and he comes over and he gets the, the ticket off the table. He says, I just want to bless you today and, and pay for this meal. And man, you know, that was God the Father uses someone to bless me, to know, let me know that he cares. And I want to let you know right now that he cares for you. And I just want to tell you a little bit more of that, um, what happened to me after that. Okay. I was like, wow, God is real. He's amazing. He just, he told me to, to just go and eat. And I, I did. And someone paid for my meal. And then I was like, well, I need to go home now. I need to get back. And you know, I didn't even have enough gas in my car to get all the way home. And the city I live in this has horrible traffic and there were there were toll road, roads. So if you took a toll road, you could get there quicker. You wouldn't get caught in traffic. And I thought, well, I want to take the toll road, but I didn't even have enough money for the toll and road. And guys, that was only picture. fifty cents. So um, that lets you know I had of our like, Lord had Jesus pennies. Christ. And and this the verse that I, I heard, heard, I heard the voice again. He said, just, just, just go, the son just of go. Man has so come I'm to on the toll road, and right before it's time to pass through the gate, being told by Jesus, I'm at the window where it's time to pay, and I roll the window down. 
And the the woman, the clerk at the toll, she says, to say the, per- the car in lost. front so of you, just pay for your morning, toll so you can go on through. Lord, if you're in a now place, I'm completely you blown away because the Father okay. says, it's God is okay real. So guys, come home. Today I is the mercy. You know, today the is the day of the mercy. Lord, show me that. It's coming from he a place of reality for me. I'm not talking about something I imagine. I'm talking... And from a place where God believe. has proved he himself just to me in my life. Lord Jesus so Christ. the person in and front of me will be saved. Paid my way. And again, to forgive us only 50 of cents. But the thing that's so amazing about that, all the city I was in at the time had millions um, of people living in it. One and nine says, that's whole um, world if probably we had our sins, hundreds of thousands of people passing to each day. What are the odds of someone um, coming in front of me. So again, today is the day of mercy and at grace. At the right moment. Don't wallow in that right time. Don't wallow in darkness. Don't you worry know, about what the right steps I like. needed it. Pray to God and didn't have that it. step of faith. That's God. The just follow his voice. He will say that that just can't happen. Place that has safety. to be God. And I know it, it may not be God, the exact so place where you came from. I just want to encourage you to a place of safety. In a bad place, a low place. And you think, oh, there's no way. I don't have the money to get home. Or where can I go? Making a way for you. Just trust the Lord. Pray to him. Ask him what to do. He will lead you step by step. I want to leave you with this thought. God the Father loves you.